Right, implantation failure. What is it and what can we do about it? So, welcome to this episode of Fertile Minds. I'm Dr. Iris Wang from RVF Australia. And let's talk about implantation failure. So what is implantation failure? Implantation failure is a term using assisted reproductive treatment such as RVF, where we have an embryo and we put the embryo inside the uterus. But that embryo fell to embed into the uterine wall and continue to grow into a fetus. So it fell to implant. Effectively, this treatment cycle did not work. So that's implantation failure. Now, before we can understand what we can do about it, we must appreciate what factors may determine the success of implantation. And we need to look at embryonic factors, as well as uterine factors, which is the maternal factors. And some stage, and probably all stages, they are interactions between the two. So you can appreciate that this is a complex process. Now we know a lot about this, but we certainly don't know everything. And I guess if we did, everyone gets pregnant and there's no need for us to sit here and talk about it. So let's start with the embryo first. We know the embryo has to have the right genetic material and the right biochemistry and good energy production to be able to implant and thrive and grow. So not all embryos have the right genetic material. Just because an embryo looks good doesn't necessarily mean this embryo is normal. And in fact, if we didn't look for it, we wouldn't know. So this is something we can do. We can test the embryo using a test called prenatal genetic testing or PGT. And we can identify chromosomally normal embryos and put that kind of embryo into the uterus and thereby improving implantation rate. So this is something that we can do. But there's also other things about the embryo. For example, the biochemistry, the energy production I was talking about. We don't have the right markers and we're not quite sure how to measure all these things. So this is the limitation of our knowledge. But without doubt, we know that a good embryo is the most important determining factor for the success of implantation, despite the limitation of our knowledge. So let's then look at the uterus. So let's start at the cellular level, at the local level. Um, the first thing is, is the uterine lining ready for the embryo to implant? We constantly assess this with ultrasound assessment of endometrial thickness, hormonal assays of all literary hormones. And sometimes we even go as far as specially targeted endometrial assays, looking for this perfect window where it is the best time to implant the embryo. And in fact, you could say that fertility doctors and nurses are all extremely obsessed with finding that right window to put the embryo back. I mean, it's a process we constantly review and reassess. But at the same time, there are potentially factors that can affect the uterus, such as infection, um, abnormal growth, such as polyps and fibroids, or scarring uh, from whatever reasons. And we can identify these with um, a special test called hysteroscopy. Now, this is a relatively simple procedure where we pass a tube up the uterus to examine the uterine contour and identify these abnormalities. And we do a targeted endometrial biopsy looking for all these abnormalities. And the abnormalities can be detected and treated um, and thereby improving outcome. 
As a general rule, the mother's health can potentially impact on the health of the uterine lining as well. For example, endocrine conditions or autoimmune conditions. So this is going away from the local factor, but about the mother's general health. So we assess and sometimes we reassess looking for things like glucose intolerance, thyroid dysfunction, prolactin dysfunction, subtle abnormalities in this area. And we look at various autoimmune factors, which can affect the small vessel um, problems that can interfere with the way the embryos implant onto the uterine lining. So these are all things we could do, we could improve on to improve outcome. Now in the last 10 to 15 years, there has been a lot of research looking at interaction between the embryo and the uterus at a very much the cellular level, particularly in terms of immunology, immunological interaction. Um, it's very exciting and fast moving, but there is still a lot we don't know and there's still a lot of controversy. For people who's had a few cycles of implantation failure and they've done the usual um, investigation being treated, but they're not succeeding. And it's understandable they would like to find something new they, they're hopeful that this can help them to achieve a pregnancy. Now, I don't want to go into all the specifics, but I will say that it is important to discuss all this with your doctor. And you should always assess risks versus benefit when you're going to embark on any controversial treatment. And I think from all these things I've said, you will get a sense that there are lots of factors involved in a successful implantation. We know some of these things, but we don't know all of it. And effectively, all these factors need to align so that we end up with a very good embryo and a very healthy uterus and with a very receptive uterine lining that the embryo can implant and stick and grow and thrive. And when that doesn't happen, just to recap, we look at embryonic factors and we look at uterine factors and we try and treat these problems before we move on to do new cycles. At another level, of course, we continue research into areas that we don't know well, um, and we look forward to bringing you all these proven new research data. So I certainly hope that uh, you find uh, this video helpful to you, and I want to wish you all the very best in your fertility journey. Well, thank you for watching. So please like and subscribe and uh, watch other episodes in our channel um, and leave your comments below. Thank you.